Oh, welcome back. Uh, so in the last video, designed this up, and uh, after I stopped recording, I went ahead and put some paint on some wood and was waiting for that to dry. And looking at this, going, you know, that kind of looks like a trash can. Um, so I uh, I made a cop. I rolled back to before I put these cuts in the side. Made a copy of the first side. And uh, then I modified the copy, and I changed it to more like that. And the uh, thought there was, you know, it looks a little bit nicer, and if the bulb is too intense, well, I can just, uh, you know, cut some cotton panels and glue them on on the inside. Um, so went ahead, made this as it is, uh, cut all the parts, and uh, assembled Actually, I'm still waiting for the glue to dry for this little stack right here. But it's basically assembled. Check that it all goes together. And uh, I think it looks good. Um, not going to throw it away or anything, but there are definitely room, there's definitely room for improvement. Um, so that's what I'm going to do today. So this is kind of a, uh, I guess you could say a continuation of the last video because it's going to be, you know, talking a little bit about a, iterative design, you know, improving what I've already come up with, because in the last video I basically started with a couple of parts I salvaged out of an old lava lamp and got to here. Now I want to take the basic concepts that I came up with here and just improve them a little bit. Um, so I made a couple of notes. Uh, first, twine corners. So uh, basically these teeth make this incredibly difficult to assemble because each of these panels needs to slide down into these holes, which are intentionally very tight. I mean, um, there's no glue holding these, and you can lift it with the top or lift it by this top panel, and it'll hold because um, it's basically just a press fit. Uh, but the, the challenge with that is with these teeth the way they are, you have to assemble multiple panels at once. You have to put this one in, just barely get into the holes down here, then put this one in to match it, and go all the way around, and then press them all down, and the the top isn't so bad once they're all just kind of oriented with each other, but it's still a real pain to assemble this. So what I'm thinking is, instead of having these teeth, uh, I would just have, basically cut the teeth off, and have a bunch of holes going down here and just have a piece of nice uh, hemp twine uh, going through the holes, basically stitch them together. That way I can just drop the panels into place and run the twine through. Obviously stitching the twine through is going to be an extra step, but it'll still be less work. And plus, uh, there's nothing necessarily holding these together other than friction, which does a good job, good enough job but it's hard to get them exactly perfect. I, it took forever to get them to where they are on mine, and even then, they're, some of them aren't quite right. So uh, the, the twine should make that a lot easier, because I can just match up the two corners that butt, and then tighten the twine down. Uh, so I have already have some pretty nice hemp twine. It's one millimeter diameter. Um, it's actually, it's a little less than that, but I'm going to call it one millimeter so that it's easier to get through the holes. Um, so, second thing is uh, this hole on the top is too big, and I was thinking it should be shrunken down, um, but that's, I think it's going to happen naturally anyway because of something else that I put on the list later. Uh, so, next thing is uh, golden ratio. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, it's, uh, it's basically this visual approximation thing. The, I, it goes back to the ancient Greeks, and you can look it up on Wikipedia if you want. But basically it says that uh, if you want something to look really nice in general, you want it to be about 1.6 times higher than it is wide, which this is, if you look at it from the side, it's almost square. So I want this to be taller or the same height and uh, not as wide, one of the two. Uh, 
this is not really so much a design thing. Uh, basically, I uh, painted this with some uh, bright green acrylic paint, and it looks nice. Uh, but I'm thinking that just with the design and kind of the old school aesthetic and all that, it might look better with a nice wood stain. And I've got some uh, some nice, uh, they call it crimson. That's not exactly what I'd call it if I was naming it. It's more of a, uh, it's almost a cherry look. Uh, I, I think it looks really nice. So I'm going to use that. Um, this item, uh, ba so basically this one kind of was built all around this socket here. So if I were to suppress that socket when I put it in, the whole thing would just, cease to exist basically everything else would suppress ba because it's all based on that um i have uh i've ordered some new sockets which are a slightly different design uh they're supposed to arrive sometime tomorrow um but i'm thinking design the whole thing so that i can basically put in whatever sockets and yeah maybe i'll have to change the hole at the base or move some things around but the, the main parts of the design will be uh, pretty much untouched. And uh, this, so as I said, um, let me get a couple things out of the way. So this whole stack up right here, there's nothing mechanical holding that together. Um, it's just glue between each of the pieces and then I use some clamps to hold it in place and uh, basically waited for that to dry overnight. Started assembling it. Some of the wood gave glue. One of the some of the glue gave a uh, gave way between these two pieces, so it's glued and drying again. And I, you know, basically I'm looking at a full day of waiting for glue to dry. When I'm thinking it might be better if I made just kind of a rectangular hole here and here and here and then just laser cut a rectangular dowel that would just slide down into the hole and that way you know it assembles nice and quick it's super tight and accurate and i don't have to worry about lining these up so much because the dowel will do it for me um, so that's that um <clears throat> oh and uh yeah i did determine that a cot some kind of diffuser is necessary since I'm just using LED bulb cotton's going to be just fine I don't need uh, anything fancy uh, probably just cut up an old pillowcase or something like that uh, but I w I'm going to design the cotton diffusers right into the initial design and uh, actually going to laser cut the cotton which uh, can be done it, it's a little bit tricky to set up so that you know cotton isn't the doesn't lay flat quite like wood does, but it can be done. So I'm going to design those panels right into it, and uh, that's also going to work with the twine, because in addition to the twine going through the holes to connect the corners, it's also going to go through the cotton to hold the cotton in place. So there will be no glue involved in that. So basically the whole thing will be held together with twine uh, and friction, uh, and maybe one screw at the bottom. Who knows? <coughs> So, uh, basically, everything I've got here is going to get scrapped. And that, that happens sometimes. So, I'm going to make a new part. <coughs> and go ahead and save it right away. And I'm just going to give it a new revision number. And I'll go ahead and throw in a couple of variables right away. Uh, just going to use the main, just one material. I'm not going to use acrylic. I, I will be using cotton, but it's so thin. I'm not even going to worry about how thick it's represented as, I don't think. And that's a decent enough start. So I do like the uh, the nine side 
three-legged design that I had before uh, as a basic idea. So I'm going to do that again. And you know what? Before I do that, though, I need to decide how, how wide this is actually going to be. And for that, I'm going to just make a vertical line here. And I'm also going to put in a, an equation. So if I already had the sockets I can measure, I could probably do this a little bit nicer, but I don't. Um, so I'm just going to make a new variable called vert height, and I can change this later. Uh, let's see. Probably a Call it 200 millimeters for right now. Let's see that uh, in inches. That would be eight inches. Uh, and call it 300 millimeters. That way, it's about one foot. Uh, so this is going to equals vert height. And I'm just going to draw a line, do a midpoint on the origin, and make it horizontal. And I'm going to say it's equal to vert height time divided by the golden ratio. And then I can just drag this sketch I already started down below. Or maybe I can't, because I referenced it somehow. Didn't mean to. I will fix that real quick, though. Then I could drag it down. And I can go to here. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to figure out. Uh, I want to put some arcs on the corners, actually, fillets. Uh, last time, I think I did like 30 millimeters, but 20 will do. Might as well do this right. I'm going to do it at all. So I'll start by drawing in the, the wood pieces, and maybe I can avoid using anything that's just a new typed in number at all. Try to do it all geometrically, or at least using the variables I already made. So centering these, making them equals, and now I need the safe disk again. again. And I want these pieces to butt up right there. Okay. So I'm going to offset this since that's the, the very outside. And I, I, I'm going to, I think I'm going to have teeth right on the outside part as opposed to a, a blank and then a tooth sticking down. So I'm going to offset this. Doesn't matter what I offset it by because I'm just going to change it. Also to save disk. And make that for construction. 
Okay, so now, like that and this, make it tangent on both sides, and then make the point coincident. And what's our radius now? Radius is only four millimeters, but it's enough that it takes the sharp edge off at least. So, I'm going to pattern this around. Okay, do it nine times. Okay, and coincident and coincidence. All right. So, that is the farthest out point that we've got, but you're not really going to notice that so much when you're looking at it from the side. What you are going to notice more is these, these walls. So, I'm going to make one more circle. That is coincident with the outermost part of that. And looking for construction. And make it coincident to there. Okay, so that's not going to work because, well, it might just work. I'm going to draw one more line, one more rectangle in just to get an idea of what I'm dealing with. Make it equal, make it perpendicular, make that equal. That, make those equal, and make those parallel. Okay, so yeah, that actually, that actually works. All right, so we've got our bottom size without actually doing any calculations on it. Just for giggles, let's see how big it actually ends up being about. About 185. Okay, that that works. That leaves us uh, enough room for the bulb and all that anyway. Uh, so I'm go around and just grab these arcs that I patterned. So I want to. Uh, I don't want these to be construction. Everything else is construction, but not these. And then I'm going to just draw lines between them. If I can see the points. It's already getting a little bit noisy in the sketch, but uh, just about done with it, so it's okay. All right, and just for, you know, don't even need that. I'll worry about the center later. All right, and I want this to be going up. Uh, it doesn't really matter in theory, except I want it to be a part of this line. So, make it equal to material thickness, and click OK. I'm going to name this scale one. And that's actually doubles as an axis, so I don't even have to make an axis right now. I'm going to hide this sketch though. And I'm going to make a plane that's parallel and coincident. And I'm going to take this sketch don't even have to make a new sketch. I can just take this existing sketch, click Extrude Boss, and select this plane up here. I want to go that way now. And I don't want to merge that. Not that it would be able to anyway. Okay, so now I have my base and my top. Obviously, 
There's work to be done still, but got to start anyway. I'm gonna show this sketch again. Because I want to take some of these, one of these rectangles anyway, use it as a, a reference. Oh, I got some of it. There we go. So I can hide that. So that's going to be one of the nine faces. Um, in fact, I'm not going to use that to make the make it right now. What I'm going to use that for is to make the cuts for the teeth. And for this. Now, last time I just used, uh, uh, I just used nine teeth, I believe, and that worked. I kind of prefer to do things parametrically with formulas and stuff, but uh, and so you know that's probably what I'm going to do. I think I just have to get this dimension, so I'm going to have to go back to the sketch. And it's going to make this a dimension right here that's driven. And go back to Notepad. Um, this is the name face wide. Wide, not weighed. So now that's face wide at sketch one. Actually, I copied that. And I'll name this scale two. All right, so then I can go back to here. Now, the reason I don't just draw the mention in this one is that if I do that and I reference it and I rebuild, it's going to throw an error. Um, by for some reason, though, it lets me get away with doing it in a in a previous sketch. It's still a driven dimension, but if you do it, if you reference a driven dimension in a formula that's from a previous sketch, it's fine. If you reference a driven dimension in a formula from the current sketch, it'll let you do it until you do a rebuild, which I'm going to have to do several rebuilds as I'm doing this. As soon as I do a rebuild, it's going to freak out. Um, I don't know if that's intentional. I, I would assume not, but uh, they it's been a known issue for quite a while and they don't seem to fix it, so I'm going to, uh, whatever. So, we've got that. And kind of going to do the, uh, the same thing we did for math way back in the, when I was doing the dice, or the die. So I'm going to make parallel equal, just give them a random dimension doesn't really matter and just draw some lines basically just using these for for math uh, so perpendicular okay so this is going to be equal to that divided by the material thickness okay oh before I forget all these for construction. <coughs> so this one is going to be equal to that. Nope. Parentheses that minus one divided by two. Okay. This one is going to be equal to int. So we're rounding down of that. Okay, and so that we need, we want to put a name on. Um, actually, that's we want to go one more step. Equals that plus one. This is base finger count. And the 
just grab that part of it. <clears throat> so I can copy the syntax. And then these, I guess, are not actually needed. Just so it's constrained, I'll go ahead and give them dimensions. And if I ever need to use them later, I've got them. <clears throat> actually, I do have one use for one of these. So I'm going to do equals to base finger count. Actually, equal. I think I already have an equal in that. Yep. Equals to that plus that. Put it all in parentheses. And then divide. Actually, that's why I'm going to be using to divide. So that's the total number of fingers and spaces between the fingers, which I want them to be equal. And this is called just finger wide. This equals so I don't keep copying it. All right, so just for uh, peace of mind, so I can be sure. So we've got six plus seven times four point six five five is sixty point five one five, and this is sixty point five one three. But this is probably rounding off. I'm guessing. Hmm. I think it's rounding off. We'll, we'll, we'll see. So this is equal to that. And select this chain, do a linear pattern. Uh, as always, I just go 101. I can back it off later. So then I want to draw just a construction line and make it equal. And let's see. Is there even a difference between these two? Yep. So I selected that, holding down control, select other, and I want the other line. I can't even uh, get close enough to see the difference. All right. What if I just go like this? 60.513, 60.513. All right, good. So we got those. So we got one side covered, but we need eight more sides. So going to select the lines I want and going to do a circular pattern with nine elements and it doesn't fully constrain so I'm going to just pull outward and then I can put it on the center and how's that turn out less than ideal so, yep, that, that's not something we want. We don't want. I mean, it's not going to fall apart, but we don't want that. So I'm going to do Control-Z, 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 and they're gone. Actually, I'm just going to keep doing Control-Zs until this pattern is gone. All right. Make this for construction as well.
So this, gonna get renamed. And this is gonna get renamed as well. Because we want this. That got interrupted, had to stop recording. And then when I click start recording again, it, uh, I guess I didn't click it hard enough or something. That's um, why I went to look at it, it was not recording. So um, I only did a couple things. Uh, basically I was working in the sketch and uh, I made this pattern basically the same way I made the pattern that, you know, had the cuts all the way out here. I just made it here. So uh, that way I don't have zero thickness between them right there, which would throw an error with SOLIDWORKS. And plus, it, not, not good design anyway to cut like that. Um, so then I did an extrude cut through all both. Um, and then I drew in this circle just to remind myself where the first tooth of the first side is. Uh, it may come in handy later. And then uh, made a circle, made it tangent with the, the first tooth, offset it by double the safe distance, and ended up with approximately 150 millimeters. Obviously, that'll, uh, that'll change when I change variables, like the wood thickness and all that. But um, so I've got the hole that I can then do an extrude cut and just go through this one piece. So now uh, got a hole in the top that light can come through. It also makes it possible to change the bulb and it also makes assembly a little bit easier, especially if I'm gonna have to be reaching in and out of there over and over again to, uh, to sew it together with the twine. Uh, so, Let's see, I am gonna start a sketch here and I wanna I wanna show this sketch again because I'm gonna take this line and this line, and convert them. I can hide that sketch and so rename this first tooth so I remember what it is, and then I can hide it as well. So I'm gonna take these lines, finish them up. Extrude boss and we'll go up to surface and I want to go up to here and I want to start from down here and I do not want to merge this. So that's a nice long thin panel right there. Um, and do a move copy bodies. And just want to make in place copies of these two. And I'll hide the originals. Oh, I want to use a combine, subtract. So this is my main, and these two, the, the copies I just made, subtract those. So now I've got the, the teeth on this panel here. All right, now I could start patterning it, but I figure I might as well actually finish making the design. That way when I pattern it, it's all just, uh, I can just pattern the whole thing all at once. Uh, so I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna hide these, the top and the bottom. So I've got this panel to work with. I'm also gonna hide this sketch. So I'm just looking at it and I'm gonna do a normal too. And I'm going to sketch on this. So I'm going to need to make a whole bunch of circles down this and a whole bunch of circles down this. And I'm going to want the circles on this side to be like halfway between the circles on this side. Make a new variable. Make 
to make two new variables. So I just want, I want to get this as close to the edges as I can. And let's see, basically my s minimum safe distance from the edge cutting on, um, on cotton is going to be uh, three millimeters. So that's what that'll be. Bring these in and I'll dimension them. And I'll quickly fix that because otherwise they'll drive me insane. Just make a quick couple of rectangles, make it equals, and make that equals, doesn't really matter, and th this doesn't really matter, th this does, so we're going to dimension it as, could have sworn I just fixed that. I did just fix that. Okay. And I'm going to select that, make it for construction, select that, make it for construction. And I'm going to go tangent. And I'm going to realize that doing it this way it could cause me problems later. So first I'm just going to basically get rid of the formula by typing in something else instead. Select this chain and delete it. Select this chain and delete it. Alright, so I'm going to draw a line, a line, a line. And go like that, go like that. I want these to be parallel. We'll fix that later. And equal. There we go. And drag this in. I want these to be parallel and equal. Um, make this parallel as well. And good enough. So let's put the form on this. It's going to be equal. Is to find safe distance plus half of the twine diameter. And then I can go like that and like that. And just for completeness, go like that. So we want, I want to select these. These are all just for construction, so let's make them so. All right. And actually, making this equal to this kind of makes sense in a way, because, uh, of course, it's not. Yeah. It seems like it should be allowed. OK. And let's see. Well, if we offset this, it doesn't matter by how much really right now, because we're going to make it equal to twine safe distance. I hope this S starts working after I get out of the sketch. And make it for construction. Uh, I'm going to have to do a linear pattern here. And it's going to be driven by a formula that I don't have the f resources to actually make yet. <laughs> uh, so that's okay. We'll fix that later. Yeah, I'm going to make this tangent. Okay. I'm going to draw a line between these two. Draw another line over to here. And these are for construction and perpendicular. 
And this is going to be coincident on that. And then an, we need another linear pattern right there. Uh, and it's going to be in this direction. And we'll make it 50 as well. Can I deal with 101 still? Good. All right. And then we need a line right here. It's also going to be for construction, and it's going to be equal to this one. That way our spacing is nice and equaled out. Good deal. All right. So, as I said, I don't have everything that I need to actually do that one. So I'm going to make a previous sketch. I'm going to convert that and that. And we'll do a smart dimension from there to there. This will be a driven dimension. And tall, wall tall. And scale three, did I already make a scale three? Nope, okay. So just put this in my notes real quick. All right, so we need to figure out how many of each of these there should be which is going to involve a little bit more complicated math than normal. Not too bad. Although saying that, I don't know if I want to have just an insane number of these. I mean, as it is, it's 50, and there's nine panels, which means... That's a lot of sewing already. What if we, uh, I think I'm going to back off even a little bit off of that. 50 and 50, Make, change it down to 25 and 25. Still going to be a good amount. Um, yeah. Get rid of this tangent relation. Actually, I'm going to delete scale 3. I don't need that anymore. And I'm going to drag this down, drag it down, and I'm going to make a, another circle. Let's see, first tooth is there. Make a tangent, and this is for construction, and it's equal. It's fully defined, and even still, I mean, they're 12 millimeters apart. It's not too bad. It's a, it's a reasonable space. It's uh, a little under half an inch in freedom units. And I'm just going to cut through there. All right. So that's how it attaches side to side. It's got the fingers on the top and bottom. Uh, they're not chamfered yet, so I'm going to do that. Construction. Come on, grab them. Yeah, made need a new variable. Okay, got the initial pair. Mirror those about that. And do a 
linear pattern. This direction, 101 of them. And OK. And coincidence. And let's see, we have finger count. Use that. And then we just need to constrain this one at the bottom. It's fully defined. And we'll do extrude cut through all. All right, so other than uh, the holes, uh, the, the, the pattern that the light can come through, the side panel's done. Uh, the top panel's done. Bottom panel still has a lot of work to do. Uh, would like to. Basically, I'm just going to start thinking about what kind of design is going to be on there. And you know, I think I'm just going to upload what we have right now. And maybe I'll get some in the comments. Give me an idea of what to put there.